thank you, Mr. President. I'm, I'm joined on the floor today for his first time on the Senate floor, John Crown, uh, who uh, works on our veterans affairs issues, um, came from the Veterans Committee and joined our staff in the last couple of weeks. And um, John Crown is a Marine, uh, did two tours of duty in Iraq, and um, we honor him for his service. And he is, um, wants to, it seems, wants to dedicate his life to serving people who also serve their country. And um, people of, of all ages and both genders and all ideologies and who serve their country any time in the last several decades. So um, I wanted to announce his um, first visit to the Senate floor today. Um, Mr. President, uh, 70 years ago this week, and I, on April 18th, 1942, 80 brave American airmen volunteered for an extremely hazardous mission. Uh, the presiding officer of the Senior Center for Pennsylvania knows that um, I like to come to the Senate floor and talk about history and honor people who have played such an important role in our, in our history. And I want to talk about these heroic men. They were known as the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders. They accepted their mission without knowing what it really entailed. The mission which followed the attack on Pearl Harbor, this is April 18th, 1942. Pearl Harbor had happened, obviously, the December before. Um, was our nation's first offensive against Japanese, on Japanese soil in the Second World War. Planned and led by Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle, the mission was risky from the outset. It was the first time the Army Air Corps and the Navy collaborated in a tactical mission, flying 16 U.S. Army Air Corps B-25 Mitchell bombers from the deck of the USS Hornet, a feat that had never been attempted before. The morning of the raid, the USS Hornet encountered Japanese ships 170 miles from the prearranged launch point. Fearing the mission might be compromised, the raiders proceeded to launch 170 miles earlier than anticipated. By departing 650 miles from their intended target, these men accepted the risk they might not have enough fuel to make it beyond the Japanese lines to occupied China. Accepting this choice meant the raiders would almost certainly have to crash land or bail out, either above Japanese-occupied China or even over the home islands in Japan. Any survivors, they knew, would certainly be subjected to imprisonment or torture or death. After reaching their targets, 15 of the bombers continued to China, while the 16th, dangerously low on fuel, headed to Russia. The total distance traveled by the raiders averaged 2,200 nautical miles over 13 hours, making it the longest combat mission ever flown in a B-25 bomber during the war. Of the 80, that's 8-0, of the 80 raiders who were launched that day, eight were captured. Of these eight prisoners, three were executed, one died of disease. Four of these prisoners returned home after the end of the war. Of the original 80 raiders, five are still with us today, and they are celebrating this week their 70th anniversary in Dayton, Ohio, honoring their fellow raiders who are no longer with them. As they gather this week, I'm proud to introduce this resolution with my colleagues from both parties and from each state where these men reside. It's my pleasure to have Senator Hutchinson from Texas, Senator Murray from Washington State, Senator Alexander from Tennessee, Senator Tester from Montana, and Senator Baucus, and Bauk, Senator Baucus also from Montana, and Senator Nelson as my co-sponsors. It's my sincere privilege, especially to have Senator Anaway and Lautenberg, both veterans of the war, as co-sponsors too. As the Raiders gather this week, these five men will honor other heroes. And this is what's even perhaps as interesting as the first part. The Chinese citizens who cared for, protected, and enabled them to survive in a foreign land, a very foreign land to these American men. A Chinese delegation is coming to Dayton for the reunion. Among the delegation is a man whose father helped carry injured raiders to safety and even nursed one raider to health. I would be certain that they couldn't talk to each other in a common language. They had never seen anybody like the other one, yet one, a Chinese, helped this American airman. It's only fitting we recognize this week's anniversary and commend the five living members and the 75 deceased members of the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders for their heroism on that day. It's fitting that we remember the compassion showed to the Raiders by the Chinese villagers they encountered. The Senate resolution is our humble attempt to show our gratitude. The valor, the skill, the courage shown by the Raiders proved invaluable to the eventual defeat of Japan during the Second World War. Today, these men 
with their Chinese friends remind us that quiet decency and uncommon valor in the face of sure danger, however rare, are traits that know no limit. I thank the President.